Okay, I'm starting the video for the day after tomorrow, tonight, by disabling all solar charge controllers. Tomorrow will be zero charging, nothing. Big shed, zero watts, carport, zero watts, east roof, zero watts, west roof, zero watts. Makes all in total zero watts. We are down to 47%. This experiment runs as expected. What a shame. Look at these perfect conditions. So it is now late afternoon, the day before we start the test. Sun is almost down and the battery is um, at 17.8% state of charge. The test lander is at 49 kilometers or 13% state of charge. So everything is good to go, but I'm not sure about the weather situation tomorrow. We have to wait for tomorrow morning and see if we start the test. Let's hope for the best. Have a good night's sleep. How did the time lapse look like? This is an absolute fail. We cannot we cannot do this test at all today. It is far too cloudy. When I woke up this morning at 6.30, I had a look on the VIM portal and could see the solar system is charging with 670 watts already. So I said, yeah, it will be a good day. It'll work. Seems to be nice and sunny outside already. So I turned around and kept sleeping. When I woke up at around 8 o'clock and had another look at the VRM and it charged with over 3 kilowatt, I said, yeah, it's time to get your ass out of the bed and pick up the camera and get going. Yeah, and as you can see from this morning, 11% state of charge the battery had. And then at 8 o'clock, it was already 16. And now we have close to 10 o'clock, 36%. 36% state of charge already. So as you have seen from the community post I did on the YouTube channel yesterday, showing I have turned off all the solar, all the solar charge controllers turned off, no energy coming in, just discharging the battery as much as possible. So we charged the car to around 75% yesterday and went for a trip to the coast. And when we came back last night, the car was down to around 13% state of charge. And this was all part of the preparation for this test today. I had the main battery down to 11% and the car on 13%, so perfect. Because I need a big capacity which can take all the energy over the whole day. Because I want to know, how much solar energy can I actually harvest with the new solar setup now? And so far, since they set up the system last Monday, uh, the battery was full every day at around noontime because there was not enough storage, not enough load on the system. And I thought if I deplete the battery completely, as well as the car's battery, I have around 80 kilowatt hours of storage then to fill. And this should be enough for the system to work the whole day through without the solar charge controllers going into absorption or even float. And I could also turn on the pool pump and charge up some other batteries here in the garage to harvest, to use as much energy as possible. Well, and then you have seen the, um, then you have seen the time lapse this morning. Uh, the weather is actually pretty nice, but we still have these thin clouds all over the sky and we don't have we don't have full capacity see there's there are clouds in front of the sun and this is everywhere and this already reduces my solar production quite a lot so here at the moment at uh, 5 to 10 now we have uh, seven and a half kilowatt coming from solar which um, I'm not complaining about that guys I'm not complaining at all this is <laughs> this is a fantastic outcome but I really wanted it to be like Ah, uh, you know, I've seen the days before when it charged with 12, 14, 15 kilowatt into the battery. Uh, there's probably nothing like this today. And so far the maximum yield I could see from the solar system here was 50 kilowatt on Tuesday because they installed everything on Monday afternoon and then Tuesday the battery was down to around 16% and including supplying power to all the connected load as well and recharging the battery to 100%. This was like 50 kilowatt hours but the battery was full shortly after 1pm already. 
And then I tried the same on Thursday and pre-charged the car for our trip to the coast yesterday. And again with all the load connected pool pump running 24-7, connecting some loads in the house with extension cables, I could gain I could gain 51 kilowatt hours from the solar system. But then shortly after noon the battery was full again. And then all the solar charge controllers turn off and throttle down and, and only deliver enough power to supply your loads. And this was the whole purpose from today. I wanted to have all this capacity available to charge the battery all day long without limitation of the solar charge controllers reaching any absorption of load state, nothing, just full power the whole day. And I wanted to see if we can make 75 or even 80 kilowatt hours. But then, um, yeah, now we've got these clouds and I think, uh, yeah, they are sunny, sunny, sunny. And then from one o'clock there will be clouds. There will be more clouds coming for the rest of the day. I want to see the maximum yield I can get from this solar system. And we probably have to repeat this test on the 21st or 22nd December again, when we have the longest day, the solis, sol the longest day here in Australia, because this will give us maximum sun exposure to the solar system. So I guess today will be more a test of how much power can I get from our solar system if we have this um, not so super sunny day. I mean, doesn't look too bad in camera, right? Look at this, blue sky, a little bit of clouding there, but I think there will be more clouds coming from the west, further down the track. Well, I guess we have already charged to uh, 38. Look at this, 38% already. I will plug in the car now, put some load on the system here and try to take away as much power as possible from our big battery here. So the solar charge controllers won't turn off today. Let's see if we can succeed and if we can get more than 51 kilowatt hour. So this will be now the test in mildly cloudy weather. Uh. See at the moment we are getting two, two and a half kilowatt from all the systems and this all adds up to eight and a half at the moment. And here the test lander is at 11% um, state of charge. Time to plug this one in really. Ah, uh, that's it. Sun is gone. I guess there will be more and more clouds coming now. But if I set up again for Wednesday, Thursday or Friday, I have to turn off the solar again for a whole day. <sighs> it seems such a waste. It is now 10.25 and we have already made 17 kilowatt hours. I need more load, I need more load. Something happened. When I had the garden mulcher running here, I could feel a little like a, like a timeout. You know, the power was gone for a split second. And I went back in the garage. You could see the Phoenix inverter is off. There's no light anymore. Something has happened. Ah, the car has stopped charging for some reason. Hmm. Ah, charging scheduled, ready to depart at 9. It must be 11 o'clock now because then it stops charging. It thinks, it, thinks there's a, it thinks there's a more expensive tariff starting now at 11. Yeah, it's 11.03. Damn it. Okay, off peak charging. And then we went under 2.5 kilowatt of power. And the MultiPlus turns off the Phoenix dam because it doesn't need it anymore. But now we are back in business. 16 amp into the car. Okay, full overload now. And this one turns on again. All good. System works as designed. Was my fault because the uh, controlled scheduling charging was turned on in the car. So my main load fell away. Holy smokes, we are at 47% already. See, I mean, it, we've got uh, we've got a bit of cloudy weather outside, and we're still making eight and a half kilowatt from the solar now. I'm charging the car full speed. I'm using the shredder in the backyard. I'm charging a battery here. The pool pump is running full blast, and we are still charging 70 amps into the battery. 23 kilowatt hours so far. 11 o'clock. We've got a double red blink here, which means we've got an over temperature warning in the Phoenix inverter. It is running on 10 amps now for 
uh, two, two and a half, three hours. So an easy fix for that is we click on the generator, which is our Phoenix inverter. And you can see the current limit is 10 amps for the MultiPlus to pull from this inverter. And we click on the minus one amp here. So our current limit is 10 amps and the new is nine. And we accept and we are ramping this one down to nine amps now. So the MultiPlus needs to do a bit more and the Phoenix a bit less for the same output. So we need to monitor the situation now and uh, this over temperature alarm should go away in a few minutes and changing these parameters is so easy because of the GUI mods we have installed here on the Raspberry Pi which gives you all the information on the Multi Plus we can see it is adding uh, an additional 2.6 kilowatts the input and output voltage of the inverter is the same the input current is 9 point is around 9 amps coming from the Phoenix and the output is 20. So the MultiPlus is adding another 11 amps. Quick update on the cloud situation. No blue sky anymore. So we are getting 11 kilowatt from the roof. So <laughs> not too bad, not complaining. Now the alarm has already stopped. So it has cooled down a bit, nice. So here, the carport, 2.25 kilowatt, east roof 2.5, west roof 2.7, and the big shed 2.1, makes 9.1 kilowatt. And now at uh, 1 p.m., we have made 41 kilowatt hours so far today. Still running strong. So it is now shortly after one o'clock and all the clouds are gone. We have got pure, pure sunshine now. That's how it's supposed to be. So let's have a look at the situation here on the roof. Um, where are we? Carport at the top. 2.3 kilowatt from these panels. There's a bit of shading on the last panel there already. It is, um, oh, it's quarter to two now. The west roof, there's a bit of shading on the last panel, bottom left, but apart from that, pure sunshine, west roof uh, 2.6. There's no shading on the east roof, 2.7, and there's no shading on the big shed, 2.6. So in all in total, this makes 10 kilowatts now of charging power. We are at 61% state of charge already with the battery. Insane. Two o'clock and we have made 48 kilowatt hours. Still going strong. There's the pool. I'm going in. A hot sweaty day today. 35 degrees. With all the clouds gone now, I hope we can compensate a bit for the cloudy morning we had. So my friends, it is now quarter past three in the afternoon and the tide is turning. You can see we are already discharging the battery now. Solar production is not enough to keep up with our maximum load. We still have the car charging full blast, the pool pump is running. And I'm also charging the Blue Eti here from the big battery directly. Oh yeah, and the irrigation pump is running as well. 5.2 kilowatt we are taking out. And here you can see the carport delivers only 750 watts. East roof, one kilowatt. West roof, one kilowatt and the big shed, two kilowatts. Let's have a look on the roof. All right, and here you can see um, the situation. So we've got shading here on the carport, of course. We've got some shading on the west roof. There's no shading on the big shed. And yep, there's a bit of shading here on the east roof as well, but the angle is really bad. As you can see, we're almost making five kilowatts still from the solar. This in the afternoon, quarter past three. So, uh, does the shading affect us here? Uh, yeah, of course it does. Does it bother us? No, nah, not at all. Because we have a massive overproduction now. I mean, this is an extreme test. Charge the vehicle on four kilowatts since this morning and have all the loads turned on, which I have. Even the light is turned on inside the garage. Usually the battery would be full by 12, 12.30. But today we want to see how much kilowatt hours we can actually produce with this system here during the whole day.
So I had to make sure none of these solar charge controllers go into absorption of load mode. And we have a maximum solar generation today. So let's have a look what we have. Ah, so far 60 kilowatt hours and we still have a few hours to go until the sun goes down. That is pretty good. 4.8 kilowatts still. Oh, you can see this. You can see this anyway. So it is now 5.30 in the afternoon. The sun is going to set in about, I would say an hour or so. And basically all the panels are shaded now, more or less. Even the big shed gets some shading. And here you can see we are still charging with over 400 watts. Oh, not charging anymore, but producing power, 400 watts, which is great. So the big question now is, how much have we made today? Let's have a look. So the car has now finished charging as well. And we basically only operate the pool pump and the Blue Eddy is still charging from the DC power here. But still over 400 watts. That's not too bad, guys. But we can also see here the carport and the east roof have dropped under 100 watts of production now. Okay, without further to do, let's have a look. Ooh, 64 kilowatt hours we have made today without having the MPPTs going into absorption of load. This was the maximum yield we could get out of it. And you can see the weather forecast here says cloudy. It was partly cloudy today, but if we have a look in the advanced settings, which you have access to as well, and we go all the way down. So this graph shows us the production of all four roofs. And you can see whenever all four roofs are dipping down like this one here and over here, see how synchronized these curves look like. And then going all the way down and then coming back. This is, these are clouds because none of the roofs get sun anymore. And then here at around 1.30, the clouds moved away. We had clear sky. And then we could see a difference in solar production between the different roofs. So here the big shed has made 13.4 kilowatt hours today. The carport has made 14.98. The east roof 17.2 and the west roof 18.5 kilowatt hours. Well, this is pretty much what I got with the old west roof and east roof combined per day. And this is what we are doing now with only the new west roof. Yeah, these panels are a lot more efficient than the old ones. So 64 kilowatt hours is an insane amount of energy. We usually use around 20 kilowatt hours with a whole house, including hot water, including car charging. Well, it's only a two person household. And without the clouds, I guess we could have seen a little bit over 70 kilowatt hours, if not even 75 kilowatt hours with this system. Well, this definitely needs to be determined again. So we will repeat this test here close to Christmas again when we have the longest day here in Australia. And then we want to see the 75 or even the 80 kilowatt hours, but it might be hot. So the whole solar system is not as effective. Anyway, guys, this was a very fun experiment, discharging the battery completely yesterday and maxing out the solar system today, see what it is capable of to deliver. And also putting these two inverters, the MultiPlus 2 and the, and the generator to a bit of a test because they were running since 10, 11 o'clock this morning when I turned on the car to charge and they just turned off like 45 minutes ago. Okay guys, so far this video from today, let me know what you think about the 64 kilowatt hours we have harvested today from the solar system. <laughs> Mind blowing. And until the next video, guys, when we do more testing, exploring and sharing here on the channel, you stay charged, stay safe and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye.